Hi, folks. I'm delighted to be joined by Mick Houlihan, who's from Borbia, who's you know heavily involved in terms of the quality assurance schemes, I suppose that that um, that are running for you know the, across the sectors, across the agri sectors, whether it's beef, sheep, dairy, pigs, and poultry, etc. So, I, I said we just touch off Mick and have a couple of questions in terms of how they're operating now under, I suppose, the new COVID restrictions. Um, Mick, you're very welcome. <clears throat> Hi, Jack. How are you? Thanks for having me. Good. Um, quick one, I suppose, just maybe if we had a, a chat just in terms of kind of an update for farmers, we'd say in terms of the quality assurance schemes, what's happening or I suppose not happening at this time at this time with under the, under the COVID restrictions? Yeah, OK. So, uh, so look, everyone will probably be familiar or aware, Jack, that we, we're, we're not currently doing audits at the moment um, on, on any of our schemes. Um, so last middle of last month, you know, obviously we were monitoring the situation closely like everybody else in the country. And, you know, we, we got to the point where we made the decision that we were going to, to cease doing audits. Um, and we did persist for uh, uh, about a week with new applications that had come through. And again, you know, we're trying to, to prioritise those, conscious of the fact that farmers were going to be maybe restricted in terms of, of, of outlets for selling cattle and that. Uh, and, you know, we did see a bit of a surge in terms of new applications, so reapplications to join the scheme uh, in, in the run into when we, we finished the audit. So we did carry on with audits on, on new applicants and reapplicants for about a week, but then ultimately, when uh, I suppose the announcement came that uh, the, 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 the restrictions that we're, we're, we're living with now were coming into a full effect, the decision was taken then to to stop all audits. And so since then, um, you know, uh, as, you, as you're aware, we, we, we haven't had any auditors out, out on the ground at all uh, con conducting audits. Okay, and is there any kind of <clears throat> what's what's happening now? We'll say for those farmers that are coming up to their, I suppose their their, their deadline, their two month extension, maybe in terms of the the assurance scheme. What kind of what's the kind of next uh, the next phase in play? I suppose. Okay, so uh, I suppose that you know we when we we suspended the audit and we obviously had to be very conscious that this was the impacts that this could have for farmers and their certification and and, and the knock on knock on effects of losing certification. So we extended uh, certificates uh, by by two months for all farmers that were due to expire um, within the, the following two months of of, of the, the the season of audit. Um, but I suppose as as we we move on, uh, we're starting to come as was towards the end end of of that those extension periods as well we we are limited in terms of the amount of uh, time that we can extend the certificate by so i suppose we're, we're subject to our audits every year from from INAV as well and and as a a, a a certified accreditation body we have to ensure that we're following the, the rules and the regulations that are set out for us and that limits us in terms of, of the amount of time we can extend the cert for so in in the absence of 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 uh, a, a re-audit or, or some form of reassessment of a scheme member, we, we, we can't extend a, a certificate. So I suppose that's why we've ended up where we are now in terms of looking at alternatives to the on-farm audit um, that will enable us then to uh, to extend sorts further or, or, or uh, in some cases recertify farmers, um, uh, recertify them oh. their membership as well. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and kind of, you know, what, what are the options there in terms of, as you say, um, you know, is, is, is there options around doing it remotely or, do, or doing it kind of not, actually auditors not going to farm or kind of what's, what's the kind of, what, what's at play there? Yeah, so I suppose what, what we have been working on is this remote auditing system, Jack, and uh, really, I suppose it's 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 trying to kind of cover off what we can in the standard as best we can without actually visiting the farm. Uh, so what's involved there? I suppose there's been a lot of work has been going on in the background the last couple of weeks, and and our our uh, IT people have been have been kept exceptionally busy on this because you know this is a, a this remote assessment system that we, we've been developing has to be rolled out for all schemes. So you know we're not just talking about the beef and dairy schemes here, which you know are, are massive schemes in their own right with over over fifty thousand members in the beef and lamb and, and sixteen thousand in the dairy, but also this has to be rolled out for 
pig poultry uh, egg, egg schemes for the horticulture scheme for the processor schemes as well so as you can imagine there's quite a bit of, of, of development work uh, going on in the background around to that but ultimately essentially what it will involve from from a farmer's perspective is is uh, there'll be probably I suppose two phone calls to be an initial phone call um, between the auditor and the farmer so uh, as normal audits will be assigned to auditors uh, and auditors will make contact with farmers and uh, look to to schedule the audit as what the difference is in this case when they're scheduling the audit it's it, they're not scheduling a farm visit they're scheduling a call at a later date and i suppose the, the reason that there's two calls involved is that between that first call to schedule the audit and the actual audit phone call itself um we'll be looking for farmers to uh, upload some some evidence or provide some evidence of of, of, of uh, their, their, their conformance with the standard and uh, i suppose this will be done uh, we're trying to keep it as straightforward as possible so again by uh, use of photographs um uh, and using a link that would be sent, a secure link that will be sent to the farmer by text message. Farmers will be able to up, upload photographs as uh, as required, and you know we'll have a a, a list, I suppose, of of what will be required from from the farmer side. So I suppose just to to, to give a, a bit of an idea of of what might be involved there. So you know we might look for photos of uh, from around the farmyard. So so photos of the animal housing uh, on the dairy farms, obviously photos from the dairy in the milking parlour. But then, you know, again, uh, looking at feed storage, looking at, at uh, uh, slurry tanks and lagoons uh, and, you know, various other things around the yard. And, and uh, then also, I suppose, from the record side of things, we'd be looking that uh, farmers would provide photographs of the most recent uh, records in relation to herd register, flock register, um, uh, feed records, uh, medicine records and, 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 and so on. Okay, so I mean, obviously, that's going to involve a good bit of maybe you know upskilling in terms of your side as well, in terms of getting auditors up to speed, etc. What what stage is that at at the moment? Yeah, so I suppose we're we're at the stage now where we've we've uh, a lot of development work is complete, and really it's about testing the systems now. Um, you know, so we we're going to be kicking off that process now in the next couple of days, and uh, we uh, will be contacting a, a number of farmers. Um, that have expressed an interest in joining the scheme, and 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 also I suppose farmers that whose whose uh, expiry uh, period is 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 coming up, uh, I suppose uh, quicker than maybe we, we we might have expected. Um, but that uh, to see will they kind of work with us to kind of test the system and see how it works. You know, I suppose it's not really until you kind of. Uh, get up and running with these type systems do you see you know does that does the theory that we've been working on actually work in practice and, and that's what we'll be doing over 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 the the, the, the next uh, couple of days and, and and into next next week hopefully then we'll be in a in a position then to start contacting uh, uh farmers uh on, on a larger scale um again to give them the option then of, of taking part in this remote assessment uh and hopefully then you know getting getting all auditors up and running, getting the audits assigned, getting farmers contacted, getting the process going and, and get back up and running again and getting uh, farms recertified uh, and, you know, back in business again, as was for for, for uh, an, another run of, of 12 or 18 months. Okay, yeah, I was just going, that was my next question. I mean, assuming, as you say, you get up and running and assuming that the process works, as you say, you know, it's, it's obviously at a very advanced stage in terms of development, but I mean, it, that will certify the farmer for the next 12, 18 months. That's, that's the plan. Yeah, and I suppose there's probably maybe two options, and to be very straight about, it, I suppose we we in our our discussions with 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 Ina, we've had to take into consideration, I suppose, risk factors here as well, and and you know we you know as with any scheme or any program, there's there's different standards that exist from 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 one member to another. Um, so I suppose there, there's probably there's there's two there's two options that we're looking at. One is a recertification option. So. I suppose farms that are deemed low risk, so farms that have had uh, a, a, a good, good history uh, of, uh, in the scheme, you know, have always performed well, have had no non compliances, you know, de they'd be deemed low risk, and the option of, of recertifying those farms is, is the one that we'd be trying to pursue there. On the other hand, I suppose there are, there are scheme members where, you know, 
history wouldn't be great where you know we would routinely come across non compliances and and you know at that in some cases repeat non compliances and and I suppose those farms would be deemed a higher risk and and in those cases we'd be looking at at uh, doing the remote assessment and following the successful completion of that it would be uh, a further cert extension from maybe you know four six four months or six months and you know those farms then would all, all require a, a full renewal all at once once we get back up and running again but i suppose the hope jack would be that we'd try and get as many farms through the recertification process as, as we could Mick, I get the, I get the feeling that okay, while you're developing this for the kind of the COVID restricted period, I mean there is a chance that this kind of remote assessment piece could kind of even go further beyond the kind of restriction period. Like obviously, you're not thinking of getting auditors out on farm in the in the in the next couple of months. Yeah, look, well, look like everyone else, I suppose we 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 we, ha we have to you know be very considered in our approach to, to to getting back out there and you know assess all the all all the risks from. Uh, an auditor's perspective and also from a, from a farmer's perspective as well and you know we we, we would uh, you know i suppose just by the nature of farming and the age profile in farming we would have a, a lot of scheme members that are, are within that vulnerable category so you know even when we do get back out on farm doing audits you know we will still need to have an option there um for a more assessment for 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 some of those those farmers as well so you know i suppose we, we're, we're developing this you know with a long-term view as well jack it's not just something to it's a stopgap measure we're, we're looking at this from uh with a longer term uh, uh perspective as well you know for uh, again you know maybe in the, in the medium term the more vulnerable farmers that that, that you, you know we will would not want to kind of if uh uh, force a farm visit upon but also longer term you know we do have, have quite a number of scheme members that are, are consistently good performers um, when it comes to meeting the standards and are consistently high scores as well and you know again if we go back to what we talked about in terms of risk you know these are farms that are low risk and and you know this potentially might be an option subject i suppose to the the, the approval from 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 INA, um that we could implement with them with them going forward as well I leave you on this, Mick. I see a piece there in the journal this week that you're you're designing a new farm sustainability program. Um, in in terms of that piece, I suppose what's what stage is it at? I suppose and and you know when when will farmers expect to see something on that? Yeah. So again, I suppose we're in the in development stage with that as well. And and really, I suppose you know what what that program is about is it's not about reinventing the wheel or coming up with a new initiative, but it's it's about trying to to quantify what's happening across the industry with all the various different initiatives that are out there you know so whether you know that's a th these are programs that exist that are run by the department that are run by chagas are run by industry um there's an awful lot of of of, of good stuff happening out there but i suppose the challenge uh is is that you know it can be hard to kind of quantify what's happening when it's it's happening in different programs operated by 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 different or, organizations so the, the the farm sustainability program is about trying to kind of bring all that together so that we can kind of that we can generate a, a national view or a national picture of what's happening in terms of sustainability on farms here so it's putting the uh, uh, it, it i suppose it's aggregating all that good work up to, to quantify what's happening nationally uh, and again be be able to use that then to demonstrate that the, the the, the positive uh, attributes of the, of, of the industry here from from a sustainability perspective so look we've we've been uh, having uh, discussions i suppose with the department with chagas with other agencies like icbf animal health Air and so on and we've also talked to, to industry to to some extent about this it's it's been uh, discussed at uh, the boards within board b as well um so look we're, we we i suppose we have a we have a, a clear vision of, of where we want to go where we want to go with it and over the next while we'll be trying to um engage more with the relevant stakeholders um and ensure that we 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 uh, end up with a program that's that's fit for purpose and and, and, and suits everyone and as you say, the intention is not to kind of, I suppose, put another scheme or another set of ho hoops on farmers. It's it's maybe, as you say, to give them credit for the some of the work that's ongoing yeah. in in other parts of it, and you know, encompass your assurance scheme so that it's a kind of an over an umbrella an, an umbrella over the whole lot, bringing it together and kind of, I suppose, you know, bringing it into the one space so that it, that that farmer can get the credit and and as well as get the yeah. assurance piece, like.
Yeah, and and that's and that's exactly it, Jack. You know, like you know, we 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 don't have the the I suppose the the, the resources or the, or the technical expertise within Borbia to be coming up with new schemes and new programs on this. But you know, we we do have uh, I, I suppose a different sort of skill set or a different sort of capacity to be able to try and and bring all that together and and manifest that as was in 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 terms of the promotions and uh, uh, that. And and the the campaigns that are required to try and and and, and you know get get the interest of of the, the the customers and the consumers internationally and you know I suppose it's it's just really acting as a facilitator I suppose Jack is what what we're trying to do here as as you said not not duplicate efforts not reinvent the wheel or anything but just act as the facilitator that can draw together all that information and, and present to you know one unified positive uh, uh, national picture for 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 the agri food industry. So, Mick, I mean, that piece is, as you say, it's, it's, it's probably at an advanced development. It's, it's not going to be next week or the week after when, when that piece is rolled out. No, no, it's not, Jack. You know, we've, there's, there's, there's a lot of work that's supposed to be done on that yet. Um, you know, we're, we're, we are, you know, I suppose even from from an IT development perspective, we're in the early days of that. Also, I suppose the, the, the engagement with the different stakeholders is ongoing. And, you know, we're, I suppose we're keen to kind of keep going with that, to try and, you know, make sure everybody understands our, our vision for this and try and get as many people on board as well so that, you know, the, the, the efforts that they're going to and the programs that they're operating, that that all kind of uh, contributes or gets accounted for um, as, as part of this initiative. Mick, it's been good to catch up. I think farmers will get, get a lot out of what you said. So listen, we'll be in touch again shortly. Great, Jack. Thanks for having me.